What if I told you guys that in two seconds a day, you could reduce waste and maximize profits in your business? A rural Washington company is using lean manufacturing to optimize their efficiency and their netting results that you guys need to see in order to believe. So stay tuned. This is a life-changing episode from Upflip. On this episode, we're gonna be interviewing Joe Pilat, owner of Joe's Gaming and Electronics. We'll see how Joe used lean manufacturing to grow his bedroom startup into a multi-million dollar powerhouse. Every aspect of his business is lean, and that's been one of the keys to his success. When you have less resources, when you have less space, you have to think lean. All I gotta do is hop into here, scan my QR code, and it takes me directly to a Costco listing that I can easily nice. add to my cart and that, check guys. out. Today, Joe's gonna share some secrets on how to use lean to build a successful business. He's also gonna talk about ways that a lean business can help you eliminate, how that improves efficiency, how that increases productivity, and ultimately maximizes your business profits. The most important thing for us is wheels. Everything's on wheels. What impact did lean have on your margins and the quality of your product? We no longer have a customer service person. We have our technicians who are customers right. serving. The tips he'll share with you guys today won't just help you grow your business, it could ultimately change your life if you implement it. So make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, that way you don't miss any of our business and life-changing content here on Upflip. Hey guys, Paul Bulanoff with Upflip, ready to introduce you to Joe Pilat. Joe, say hi to our audience. What's up, audience? So I can't wait to share your story and uh, I guess we can start off with, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you started this business. Yeah, I started this business in my parents' bedroom, I guess my bedroom, but my parents' <laughs> house. And then I eventually upgraded to my parents' garage, which is really cool. I had a couple shelves there, got a couple of buddies, and we started fixing stuff. We saw a big need in the marketplace for having electronics being repaired. And we're going to repair as many electronics as we can to save people money Change and try to bring their products back to life. That's always what we're trying to do with all the new products that we bring on. Was there a moment that kind of tipped you into thinking of this as a business idea? Yeah, I think really the most important thing that brought us into thinking that this would be a business was when I was in college. And that first month of college when I had too much work going on here. And I had to make a difficult decision. Do I continue this traditional path? Or do I go ahead and start and put more time into the business? Right. That's kind of what shifted to make it think like, hey, this is no longer a job. It's actually a business. It's actually an opportunity for me to get better, opportunity for us to grow. And that really, that had to make a really hard decision because, you know, school takes up a lot of time. Right. And at that moment, you got to make a decision if you're going to go full time with your hustle or you go full time with college. Exactly. Right. How did you discover Lean? So I discovered Lean by talking to buddies that worked for FastCap. Okay. And they would always say, man, things run differently there. Like it's actually fun. We get a little, or do Lean things. And I've heard bad things about Lean from other people. Like, oh, they're, they're trying to cut my hours or something dumb like that. But really when you come down to it, Lean is just about making life easier. And when I read the book, Two Second Lean, it allowed me to understand that that's really what we're trying to do. We're just trying to make things a little bit easier. We're trying to fix the things that bug us. Right. It has nothing that's what to it do about wasting to. time or reducing time. That's all the other layers to it. But if you just kind of do the basics of it, we're just trying to make things easier. And once I wrapped my mind around that, I got to go a little deeper into the eight wastes, which are really important. Transportation, inventory, motion, waiting, overproduction, overprocessing, defects, and skills. Those are the eight ways. Let's dive into lean. How did that change your business? And at what point did you really start to experience that? Well, as we all know, for me at least, Paul Akers is the father of lean to me. Of course, there Absolutely. was people before him, but to me, he's the father of lean. Paul Akers, if you guys haven't heard him, check him out in our videos. We've got a number of episodes with him. He is truly, like you said, the, 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 the master of lean. So he's the master of lean. So all the stuff we have here, we stole from FastCap. We rip, stole rip from off and duplicate, hundred right? percent. Rip off, duplicate, and hopefully improve it. That's right. the most important thing. And lead's been super important to our business because it makes our lives easier. It makes my life easier, and most importantly, it makes our customers' lives easier. 
And if we can do all three of those things, it makes everyone's life amazing. You know, who uh, doesn't want their job to be easier? Right. Which customer doesn't want a better experience? I would think everyone. Where did that start to grow, the whole idea of Lean? Can you share a little bit about your journey with that? Sure. So like I was saying, Paul kind of introduced me to his two-second Lean book, which basically blew my mind. Mm -hmm. And that was the antithesis and the starting point of Lean for us. So the literature in the book kind of helped us structure what we needed to do. And we had to build a Lean culture that would improve every single day. And the, the obviously the thesis of the book is to improve two seconds at a time. Right. And so we were just super pumped to start improving, to make things easier. And Paul really got us on board with that. And we started trying a little bit, you know, and we just, we tried and we're like, wow, this is really cool. And kind over time, contagious, super contagious. And like you were telling me right before this compound interest, that's what improvements are. They're compound interest every single day, especially if you're sharing them with the team. Mm -hmm. It is, it is a, it's a true virus. Right. Joey, what's your favorite implementation of Lean? Can you show that to us? Absolutely. So of course, when you understand Lean, you're always trying to find ways to make your life easier. And that's really, really important. So what we have here is something that we took the implementation of Kanban, the idea of Kanban. Each thing needs to be reordered. Anything from the toilet paper to certain parts that we need, need to be reordered. And how do you do that? So what we do is we use our Kanban system, which is a really easy, and you could do this at home. I'm gonna show you something with something as simple as ordering toilet paper from Costco, which is really easy. We have a QR code here. This QR code, if you scan it with your phone, will take you to a listing that has these specific paper towels. All I gotta do is hop into here, scan my QR code, and it takes me directly to a Costco listing that I can easily nice. add to my cart and that, check guys. out. This has nothing to do with barcodes. There's nothing special. It's just a QR code maker that allows you to order anything. Imagine for all the different things that you have. And this really changed the way we order. It made my life easier. So instead of two people doing my job, I can do this all myself. Right. What impact did Lean have on your margins and the quality of your product? The biggest impact it had was on our team because we make their lives easier. Because we made their likes easier, the product that the output is better. Because the product they output is better, then the profits are better. Because there's going to be less issues, there's going to be higher profit margins, and everyone's happier that way. And so we're able to become more profitable because we're able to take our labor that was being uh, is a non-value added labor, meaning like shipping or cleaning, and moving those into technical areas, which allows us to be able to generate revenue from those areas. So we basically redistributed the workforce from areas that are non-value added to areas that were value added, creating more profits for our business and making the product better because everyone's cross-trained. They know a bunch of different things. And that's really where the margin can be gained from lean because you're taking people from areas that you don't need them in necessarily and putting them into areas of revenue generation, which makes a big, big difference. At one point, we used to have four people shipping and one person cleaning. Today, we have one person shipping and no one cleaning, meaning all the technicians clean their own product. Right. And we did that because we wanted to add more value back to the customer. So we have a lot of visitors here, people checking out what we're doing, moms, dads, just making sure their kids are actually at work. So what we try to do is we try to make things easy. Uh, one of the things we can't live without is Wi-Fi, and one of our technicians here, Dan, actually made a really cool improvement. Up here, you see we have our passwords. We have this in different parts of our warehouse, and all you simply do is just go ahead and scan this, with your camera and once you do that you click on it and you join and now there's no need to put a password in as an uppercase as a lowercase as a sideways case is there a number who cares the whole idea is you scan it you log in you're good to go no more having to ask anything else that's one of those lean things that we do here what about tools i see there's a lot going on what would be one lean manufacturing tool that you've implemented why, what did that process look like? The most important thing for us is wheels. Everything's on wheels. I noticed, yeah, almost yeah. everything. You everything, this everything's so every, on wheels. Everything you see in this shop here pretty much has from wheels. From our garbage, from our 
compressor, everything has wheels, everything has wheels, everything why, has wheels. Why is that important, Joe? We want to be able to move and change and morph as our needs grow and change. Without adding costs of, say, uprooting the cabinet from exactly. that spot. And, What's the whole point? Right. There's no point, really. There's no value add. One second, we bring it back. There's no value add to the customer. So we want to make it as easy as possible to move anything at any time very quickly. And also one thing that really helped us out a lot too is because everything is in wheels and we have a smaller space, mm -hmm. we gotta take everything out of boxes. So we gotta think really lean where we can add way more stuff in here because we're thinking we don't have that much space. So now we have to take everything out of boxes. And we take all the stuff out of boxes and put it into a box and then we can standardize it. Right. Standardization is super important as well. So when you have less resources, when you have less space, you have to think lean. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's also a little bit more difficult for bigger businesses to think lean because they have resources, they have space. They can right. just keep throwing crap everywhere. Yeah, they keep being very wasteful. So if you don't have those resources, you gotta get think really lean. is actually pretty neat. Something that we've been working on is all the different inventory we have coming in gets checked right away. In the past, we used to just list a bunch of different stuff and not know if we can repair it. So we made some process change where guys go through and identify the issues before we actually list it. So we have a general cleaning area, which is really cool. We built in this little switch that makes everything really, really light. And if you gotta blow anything out, this is right here. So we got the air to blow that out along with any other attachments. And we got like a little cleaning wheel. So that was a couple iterations and we're able to have a nice standard cleaning area. We also have our office station here. Everything we need, we have our laminator, something to cut paper with. We have our printer, paper, all of it's all in one area. We used to have it in a bunch of different areas, which is really confusing. So we're able to make that work for us, which is really awesome as well. But what about customer service as far as lean? Uh, how's that helped you improve it? So what we did in our business in regards to customer service is having our technicians become customer service agents. Interesting. And the most rewarding thing for our customers, how we add value to our customers, is to have our customers talk to a person that's actually fixing the thing that they're asking. That is pretty cool. Isn't that amazing? You don't have to put anyone on hold. If, Paul, if I call you and you're a real estate agent, you probably know real estate stuff. Absolutely. But if I call your office and it's a receptionist and she has no idea what real estate is, hold. so what we try to do is create a phone tree within our CRM so when somebody calls in, they click a button based off what department they want and they get to a person that can actually help them. That's awesome. And so as you can see, the, we have our, our software here that helps us with that. And we have our phones here and we have three different lines connected. And so far we have three people and we're gonna implement this up to six different people on phones, different departments. So if you have a shipping question, you get a ring to the shipping department. Gotcha. If you have a general customer service question, you get a ring to the general customer service. And the reason why this is lean is because we no longer have a customer service person. We have our technicians who are customer right. serving, meaning there's no training onboarding needed. All they need to do is learn to use the system and been able to answer the questions the customer has. Right. There's no more six month training course to get someone to be able to learn the generals of customer service. How did lean uh, principles improve the quality uh, of your employees? That's a really good question, Paul. And I just thought of a really good example of this, but we used to all work seven days a week. Wow. At the beginning of our company, we all worked seven days a week. We took no days off, and every single day we had to come and grind. And now we're able to work five days a week. We're able to take days off, and we're able to do this because we're able to do more in less time. So we have a team that can take care of more and less time and Lean allowed us to have that extra time. Make sure you guys check out our other uh, Lean Manufacturing videos in the description below or check out these Paul Akers videos right here. They're gonna be blowing your mind away and execute on everything that we're talking about. That's really what the game changer is. We would love to hear your Lean ideas. Comment them below. Uh, make sure you do that. We're a community. I'd love to collaborate, uh, engage, and add value to you and receive value back. So thank you for watching and let's keep going. What are the challenges of implementing a lean business model? Regardless of what kind of people you have, everyone's stubborn, including myself. And it's really difficult to change. It's so, so difficult. So if you're gonna take on lean, it is a journey. It is a really tough journey and you have to be convinced that this is the right way to run a business. Because if you're not convinced, you're gonna fall and falter. 
but being the example of lean, me being the person that first stood up, me being the person that had the first standing desk and doing that for six months before anyone even became interested and slowly telling them, hey, this is not to make your life harder. It's to make your life easier. Right. Paul, if I could tell you I could make your life easier at your job, wouldn't you love that? Absolutely. Awesome. And you get paid the same, not less, more, and you get more hours. Be more efficient. We're not taking anything from you. We're just giving everything back to you. We're giving time back to you. We're giving patience back to you. We're giving everything back to you. And we had a lot of pushback. But then slowly as kind of the leaders of the business started to sink their teeth into it, like, wow, it's actually fun. Well, this is the end of part one. I hope you guys really enjoyed us hearing from Joe, his story, his experience. I'm fascinated and blown away by all the things they're implementing, the idea of lean. Um, we'd love to hear from you as well. So if you wanna share your lean ideas, share that with us in the comments section. We wanna hear from you. We read every comment. We wanna engage and add more value. So I hope you really enjoyed this. If you have, haven't subscribed already to our channel, please do so right now, smash that button. Uh, like this video and make sure you check out part two. Some amazing content coming up. Again, link is in the description below or just use this thumbnail right here.